fight. All Nigel, right. can you just make sure we sound all good right now still through like the headphones or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we good all sound go. great. Okay, we are, uh, we're uh, live. Live, and <laughs> welcome back to another episode of Two Rights Make a Wrong. Uh, that's Daniel. That's Russell. And as always, well, not always, but um, more often than not now, we've got uh, the crew in the studio. We've got Lilo and Jay Luther and Carl. Um, Lilo currently not pictured. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing all right. Yeah. Um, uh, hold on. Hold on. Before we go any further. Dwayne, The Rock Johnson, uh, I may have said that I uh, wanted to steal your children. <laughs> I do not, and I am very sorry that it might have came out that way. Uh, I, that is not something I want to do and in, by any stretch of the imagination, just, just so you know. That's a good apology. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I just wanted to get that out there. Like, I'm not... That's not something I want to do. I I mean, no harm to the Rock or his family. Yeah. Which he's like, he's got, he's got three daughters. He has three daughters. Yes. And you said you wanted to steal all three of them. No, no, no. none of them. <laughs> none of them at all. No, none, none, none of them. them at all. That's good. So, <laughs> if the Rock, if the Rock's entire family got into wrestling. Like, what, do you think they'd have like a family themed thing? The avalanche. They that's all. That's actually already a thing. What? Like a lot of his family's already re are already wrestlers. Are they? Oh. Yeah, Roman Reigns. Um, there was I'm pretty sure Umaga at one point. The Usos. Um, no, that's a that's a family thing with them. <laughs> oh, I know his cousin is his stunt man. Oh, in like the movies and stuff. Yeah. In his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if, like, if they all were named after kind of rocks or something like that? I mean, named after rocks or just like called different types of rocks? Like his wife could be Boulder. Yeah. yeah. The Boulder. Yeah. Um, I feel like the kids would be, like, Stone and Pebble, and then you'd have the Black Sheep, which would be, like, River. <laughs> all right. You know? Yeah. Maybe. Those aren't bad names. No. Two of them are from Avatar Last Airbender, though, so I appreciate that. I mean, they're just cool. Are you okay over there? You're going to knock everything over, I feel. Turn on. There we go. I think that's going to be better. Cool. All right. All right. Anyway, so what you got going on? Not a ton. Um... Yeah, I don't have any apologies. I don't offend anyone, I don't think. Well, maybe not that you know of yet. Yeah, I guess. There's probably anyone can get offended by anything. That is true. Yeah. Um, so I do have something that I want to bring up. Yeah. I want to know if you've heard of it or if any of you have heard of it or if any of you have heard of it. But I've been seeing this thing come up on my Instagram lately um, a, and where people are telling you, don't Google this. Do not Google a blue waffle. Yeah, don't do that. You will be so... And well, I wanted to know... I googled it, and literally the only... With safe search off, by the way, the only thing that I could find were pictures of blue waffles. So I'm like, is this just a, a trend that they're trying to make you think it's actually something that it's not, and really it's just you're just searching blue waffles? I think, Cause I my, think that I, actually has something to do with you, actually. What do you mean? Well, because I have a guess on what a blue waffle would have been if it was a thing. Okay, hold on. First of all, my, guess it. my... I have a guess. My, my theory well, is... Yeah, unless you've heard it before. I, don't I think haven't heard it before. My but, theory okay. is, is I don't think your phone algorithms are degenerate enough to pick up... Like, when you search blue waffle, it's thinking, like, oh, yeah, he legitimately wants 
a waffle that is the color blue. And that's literally all I could find on yeah. Google Images. So now that that's my guess of why you couldn't find it. Okay. What do you think a blue waffle is? Uh, some sort of like moldy vagina. Yeah, fairly frank. That's that's enough. my guess. That's what I. That's my guess. It's a made up disease. It's a made it up disease. It's fake. It's fake. Yeah. Okay. Well, but have you have you guys seen I've pictures seen the of? Pic- I. I was told to look it up in a day, in an era when Google Safe Search did not exist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, so this is an old thing then. Oh yeah. Oh, no, I see. I, was, I thought this was, I was new because I just school. I just got it flooded full of on my it's, like from random sources just on just, my feed. It's just, it's just don't like, look this up. Don't look this up. History it's repeats just, itself. Yeah, history okay. repeats itself. It's like every ten to fifteen years. So when's two girls one cup gonna come back around? Yeah. Well, that's kind of gone. That's kind of gone. They've kind that's of just scrubbed. normal. Gen Z sex now. <laughs> that, mm. <laughs> and that's what you... <laughs> you like Gen Z. Look, look. <laughs> they're wild. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you that. They're wild. I do like Gen Z. They're, they're full of... Oh, man. <laughs> well, in more than one way. <laughs> so, okay. So, it is a real made-up thing that you can find. I just was unable to find it. Yeah. But, hey, I'm glad I was right in my guess on what it was. Yeah, you were fairly, you were fairly close. Right. It was, well, what it was is it then, good. actually? Like, just an infected... Oh, vagina. okay. A horribly, horribly infected vagina. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Not missing out on much, then. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. You never know. That might have been the push that maybe have gotten you to be like, you know what? I want to be a gynecologist because I don't want that to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to be a gynecologist, though, because it's like you don't want to make your hobbies into work, right? It's kind of why I'm not a mechanic. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I guess you have a point there. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was bad. What was bad? You. Oh. Okay. Good. That's funny though. That's good. I'm glad. Um, um Yeah. I saved a bird. You saved a bird? Yeah, I named it Gus. There was uh Like we were, recently? Yeah. Uh okay. on Thursday. I saved a bird. Um we were walking the dogs and there's this bird that couldn't fly. So I figured it was injured, right? I scooped it up, put it into a box, fed it some seeds and Gave it some water and all this kind of stuff. Uh, did I say his name was Gus? Oh. A couple times. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you the picture of Gus. Um, Where's the bird right now? Well, it died on Friday. Okay. Uh, so you didn't really save it. That's Gus. Yeah. He was so sweet. A robin? It was a robin, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I was sleeping on its side. Are you able to, and like... I was just like, birds don't sleep on their sides. <laughs> no, they don't. No. Are you able to like put that image up? Yes, like I will right, be. I will like be putting. Right yes, the image will be put up like right here. Cool. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. So, so, Gus. so I feel really bad for Gus, and then so we were gonna, yeah, we got rid of Gus then, um, and then the same day we saw a squirrel dead in our yard. So now we just have a pile of dead animals, in a pile. Well, it's two. Okay. Two dead animals. So you're gonna have a couple more to yeah. that? Yeah, we weren't gonna like we weren't gonna like try to keep this bird as a pet, by the way. Like I was looking up wildlife sanctuaries that I could have taken it to in the next day, but overnight it had to sleep on its side. It decided to sleep on its side. I've heard it's kinda like sharks, if they jump completely out of water they die. Or whatever, or if they stop moving. What's the thing if they stop moving they die? It's kinda like that. Yeah, if birds something. sleep on their sides, they die. Yeah. Did I ever tell you the goose story? I don't believe you've ever told me a story about a goose. This was uh, a few years back. I was on my way to work. And in fact, this was my first day of work at this particular job. And I'm headed down the road. And I'm like maybe a car length or two behind the car in front of me. And then all of a sudden, an entire flock of geese just fly across the road. To which this point, the car in front of me slams on her brakes because I notice a minimum of two of them bounce straight off of her car. 
and while traffic's going by, it was pretty busy, so I couldn't like go around her. I was in the left lane of a two lanes, and she stopped, and I see her just freaking out in her car. So I go to see what like what's going on. Like you get out of your car? Yeah. Okay. Well, her window was open. There's a goose inside the car. And there was a goose inside of her car dying. Oh, man. Yeah, like. That's rough, buddy. So I had to, like, get it out of her car for her. Oh, you got it out of her car? Yeah, wow. I got, her, I got it out of her car And they for say her. chivalry's not dead, or is dead. Chivalry's dead. It's not. This guy, proof right there. How nice. I don't know if any of that falls under chivalry, but, you know. Um. That, yeah, I definitely got it out of her car. It was oddly soft. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, they are. They're a lot of fluff. Well, I just meant, like, I've never held, like, a large bird okay. before. Especially one with, like, a giraffe neck. Okay. So, like, when this thing was dead, like, its neck and head and everything, it was, like, it was oddly, like, just, like limp it was Mm. really weird i've never you know my only experience holding a goose is a dead one oh so it was fully dead when Uh, you i'm pretty sure but like by the time i got like it calmed down it just it was completely just limp i'm really curious though because if this thing flew into the window yeah what happened to it because it didn't like it didn't hit the windshield in front smash through the windshield and die it flew through an open window so yeah, here, how the did window thing... was only open like this much. Oh, so this I thing think just it, like... I, I think it flew in and probably like snapped its neck while smashing into the window. Because <sighs> it was in the passenger seat. Like it was in the, on the floor of the passenger seat. It's not like it was flying around the car. It was literally just like in the passenger seat on the floor. Like kind of doing one of these things. And Break then dancing. it just stopped. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Kind of. Did you, did you hit I, any of I these? Mean, I mean... I had to apologize to her because throughout all of this, I am crying from laughter. Okay. I I could not control myself. It was one of the funniest things I've seen in my life. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Because there was like, at the beginning, there was a minimum of two geese that like hit her car and like bounced off. It was just an amazing spectacle to begin with. That would have been something to see, yeah. (laughs) It was crazy. I would have, I just would have been sad. I mean, okay. I love birds. I mean, I don't. I didn't know what to do about something like that. That was just, yeah. Even if it was tragic, I, I think I still would have laughed because I don't know what other reaction I could have had. I suppose. Well, that's crazy. Any other crazy animal stories? Oh, I have tons of crazy animal okay. stories. I guess. You. Remember, I when I was a kid, like when we lived north of here, and I just used to bring home boxes of turkeys. Baby turkeys and no. random things. No. No? You don't remember any of that? No. No. Yep. I would just find, like, the turkeys in the fields back where the Indian burial ground was. And if you chase after Native. baby turkeys. Huh? Native. Indigenous sure. person. Sure. Um, but, yeah, but if you run at baby turkeys, they just duck because they're trying to hide. They can't get away from anything, so they just duck. So you just, I could just scoop them all up, put them into a box, brought them home. Dad's like, take those back. I'm like, oh, I want to raise them. He did not let me raise them. Okay. Yeah. No, I used to play with possums and stuff. No, I would try. I captured one once. That's good. What'd you do with it? Um, We let it go somewhere safer. Because it was like roaming around um, my buddy's grandma's house. Like inside? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and she, like, trapped it in a wheelbarrow. So she just, like, flipped the wheelbarrow upside down? Yeah. Inside of the house. Yeah. <laughs> inside of the house. Why does she have a wheelbarrow inside she of her house? She was a hoarder. Oh, okay. She was a hoarder. There was a lot of stuff in there. That's crazy. There was a, um, there was a belly dancing. Like, it was a very, like, you know, those, like, really tiny instruction booklets? Yeah. It it was it was one for belly dancing, and with tassels, nipple tassels for some reason, and it was shoved inside of a Bible. 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yep. <laughs> That's where it belongs. Uh, I don't know. It was. I mean, the symbols obviously couldn't fit inside the the nipple symbols. No. Well, oh. no. Oh, the finger. The, the little yeah, finger. Symbols. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. She had a lot of crazy shit in that house. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've known a couple hoarders throughout the day. Years. I've heard of hoarders. Like, I've known people say that, oh, these people are hoarders, but I've never really, I've only, I think I've only been in one hoarder's house. Yeah, probably. Which was yeah. in our old subdivision. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only hoarder house I've ever been inside of. Yeah, it's crazy. That one was crazy because that was just newspapers. It was just newspapers. Their entire house was lo- like the walls were lined with newspapers. Everywhere you went, you had to walk through walls of newspapers. It was absolutely insane. Dude, their garage, they had a classic car in there. And then didn't they have like lockers, like school lockers in there too? I don't know about the lockers. I don't remember lockers, but I know they had this classic car in their garage, but the entire garage was filled with newspapers. Yeah. Like, and it was just over the car. Like, it was just crazy. Absolutely insane. Yeah. It was paper and just bullshit. So, yeah. Um, We're going to completely change topics here. That's fine. Because um, I don't know how to naturally go into what I wanted to talk about. But this thing, uh, I wanted to talk to you. And I, I specifically am glad that uh, Jay is here for this one. Oh. Because um, we'll get there, though. Um. Is there anybody's like career that you closely follow, and, it, and like especially if you've like followed it for a long time? No, probably the closest people I follow their careers to would be some golfers. Golfers, yeah, that's about it. Like no musicians or anything. Not really. I mean, I follow band like or Cohen and actor. Cambria. No, just golfers, I guess. Oh, okay. But it hasn't even been that long of time. It's been maybe the last, like, two to three years. Fair enough. Why? I just thought, like, you maybe, you, there was just people out there that you followed a little bit closer. Like, no. I thought maybe Claudio or something like I that. I really don't. Hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I just don't. These people are just people. I don't really care that much. It's just kind of like how people love sports so much. I'll I'll watch a good sport. It's fun, right? But I could care less to know about any of the stats or anything like that. Like, it doesn't make sense to me how people can argue about sports more heatedly than they would talk about politics. That makes no sense to me how people can get so into that. But whatever, you do you. Um, yeah, I think there's just a lot of things involved with that. But yeah, yeah. but yeah, they're just people. I don't really don't. Fair enough. Like, I, I, I honestly think that if I met one of my favorite people out there, I would still just probably be like, oh, hey, man, how's it going? I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, you're like, yeah. I would just be like, oh, cool. Hey. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody I'd shit my pants over if I met. But, uh, but yeah. I mean, you follow, you, you have people that you follow. Like, you know all about these people who are in these bands and create sub bands and create swan core and create all this other kind of stuff. So like, what do you have a specific person you had in mind that well, you were talking there's about? There's a couple people that I probably know more about than anybody else out there. One of them is Kevin Smith. Yeah. Like I follow, I've been following his career for a, a stupid long time. Mm-hmm. I love everything that guy does. Um, Tom DeLonge. Yeah, you love Tom DeLong. I love Tom DeLong. And that this is why I wanted to bring talk to to Jay about this. Cuz I've heard some things and I don't know what I've heard. So what is your opinion on Tom DeLong? Did. Yep. I know that sounded like it was open-ended, but I think it was meant to be close. Like but j- just my opinion on Tom DeLong in general. So I guess I guess I guess I'm, uh, I'm, I, that I, you're right. I did kind of generalize it as like who Tom DeLonge is in per, uh, general, but like, how do you feel about him in his musical career and him sing his singing style and everything? So first off, very, very, dare I say iconic, uh, voice. It don't worry. It, uh, it get raised up. Definitely, uh, definitely, uh, 
what did I just say? Iconic voice? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Iconic voice, very uh, influential figure um, in the pop punks, um, you know, scene and era and stuff like that. Um, he definitely was very, very, very... Uh, he's always been very opinionated and outspoken about his feelings on, like, aliens, things like that. Tom was right. Um, so. Yeah, no, I was like, now we're in an era where... It's, it's, <laughs> so I actually have a natural segue that is on my list. Anyway. So, yeah. But I, I want to yeah. hear what he says, because, like, the reason I bring this up is because, like, throughout the years, um, listening to your guys' musical endeavors, um, and uh, I don't know what it is exactly inside my brain, but I know somebody said, like, talk to Nigel about what, how he speaks about like how Tom DeLonge sings. And I don't remember if it was like a good thing or a bad thing about it. So he, cause I thought for some reason in my personal brain, I thought somebody said that you need to talk to Nigel about how Tom DeLonge articulates and how great he articulates, which I find funny cause everybody makes fun of like how he sings. Yeah, I mean, it. Uh, that goes into the broad stroke statement of, like, you know, iconic voice. It's iconic to the point where it's, you know, consistently mimicked. Like, to the point, I know, like, uh, you ever find yourself in a position where, like, you're trying to sing along to a Blink-182 song and you almost can't not do, like, the Tom DeLonge accent? Yeah. Like, no, like, there, there's something to be said about that. First off, there's already something to be said in general about uh, when it comes to singing, um... You know, like, there was a point where I was, you know, doing, like, you know, vocal lessons and then, like, looking up my own research and whatnot. There is something to be said about, like, you know, the way you would approach your enunciation for singing is different than the way you would approach it for, like, just talking in general. Um, like, you, like, when you're singing, you want to over-enunciate a lot of your vowels. Um, and, hold on. Uh, you want to over-enunciate a lot of your vowels, you know, and he... He definitely over enunciates a lot of his, like almost to a you know to an extreme. But the thing is, you always know what he's saying. Oh yeah. Like it, there's never been a point you've ever heard Tom DeLonge sing and you're just like, what what did he just say there? Yeah. Like no, you know exactly what he's saying. Um. Ultimately, it's uh, I think it's honestly one of the things that really kind of you know does make him an icon, and it did really kind of help you know with Blink 182's overall sound. Um. Yeah, I agree with that because I, I would have to say like, there's nothing. I, I'm I'm not gonna say it's bad. I just think that the Blink One Eight Two albums with Matt Skiba were their weakest. So I just I just want to throw that out there. I like I like Matt Skiba. I like the Alkaline Trio. I love them, but you know, I really I really think you know like. The the thing about that actually is what I was kind of the most upset by was the fact that you know Tom and Travis go went and decided to do their own side project without Mark, mm -hmm. and that wasn't Blink One Eighty Two that was Boxcar Racer, yeah. right? And then um, which I loved, and then you know, and Mark Mark took Travis without Tom, and they did Plus Forty Four, not Blink One Eighty Two. So why? Why did they do Matt Skiba the disservice of bringing him into Blink-182? They should have just started a brand new band. Yeah. And this whole, yeah, are, this is the more recent stuff where Tom DeLonge wasn't in the band. Well, yeah, the most recent Tom's back. He but, is. Yeah. But like, because, yeah, I, I said that too. I didn't make, it didn't make sense to me where they all had these different side things where it's like, if it's not the same members, call it something different. And because Blink-182 was one of the Tom DeLonge bands. Well, and it was Tom. It was, you know, yeah. Tom and Mark, really. But, like, but it didn't, it didn't make sense to me either. But I think that they really did it because they were kind of coming back. And that was the most notable people. If you would put Blink-182 on it, that was the best marketable thing for them to do. So as a business <laughs> standpoint, it makes sense. But, yeah, I don't think they should. I think they should have called it something different. I was saying one of the most marketable things they could have done is Travis Barker marrying one of those Kardashians or whoever it is he married. Isn't right. he married to a Kardashian? Isn't he? Yeah, but I was talking about yeah. coming back as a band That's yeah. for, from so long. That was but, crazy. Yeah. Uh, one of my old friends uh, saw Travis Barker in, with a kid at, uh, in an elevator 
at at the Atlantis Resort. I have a story about this, cool. but well, I got to save it for okay. a different podcast. Okay. Um, but so speaking of Tom DeLong, though, I do have on my thing of things to talk about. So perfect segue here mm-hmm. is the I was right stuff about aliens. Well, that you were right? No, Tom him. was right. Yeah, because yeah. it's his thing is I was right, right? Tom was right. Yeah. Yeah. Um what exactly we had a brief conversation about a while ago. What exactly did we have we learned about aliens and where are we going from here? Because I feel like there was this whole debriefing about all of this stuff that was actually real underwater aliens, something like that, whatever it is, and then now it's just not a conversation anymore. It's just no, it is a conversation. I don't know what the exact everything is. I don't even know if anybody exactly admitted to quote unquote aliens, but they have admitted to what are they called? I forget what they're called now. They're not UFOs anymore, they have a different name UFDs, maybe, but they're like on a unidentified flying devices like okay. they basically opened up saying hey there are definitely these things and hey there's definitely other things like other people out there it wasn't part of it like all this underwater civilization or something like that well um i mean i think the underwater civilization is theory but like i think one of the Tic Tacs definitely went into the water. Oh, one of the we things have no that idea went, why it went yeah. in or out of the water. We don't know if there's a base down there or if there's a civilization down there. Because if there's a civilization down there, then we obviously know that we can go down there. But well, you know what I mean. Not part, not necessarily. Well, I'm just. I mean that there's something down there, as opposed to like, let's say there's some, let's say like there's some unknown miner- mineral down in the bottom of the ocean that we're unaware of. And they just go down there and, like, they're gathering. Like, there may not be anything down there for us to discover in the regards of an alien species, right? But they're going down there and mining. Okay. And I, and I just made that up off the top of my head. That uh-huh. is, like, I have not thought about, like, I have not seen that anywhere else. So I'm just saying, like, you know, like, I don't think, you know, we've known that things are going into the water. Okay. You know. It's kind of like all this, which... It's all this, like, secret stuff that's going on. Like, all this stuff that's going on in Antarctica. And now there's people who said that they were stationed at the base. And they had keys to every single room. And they're coming out and talking about all this stuff that's going on in Antarctica that's supposed to be a complete secret. But how are they just coming out and just talking about this stuff? Because How are they allowed it, it, to just... Eventually, it gets, like, declassified. I don't think this stuff is quite declassified. I just think that they're Depends just... Depends on how long ago it was. And then, you know, people do, you know... People can talk like that's the thing it's like people are able to talk there's at a certain point you can't stop that from happening yeah well and that's why i'm just curious why like all of this i uh, like alien stuff or underwater stuff whatever like all this top secret stuff that people theorize about how it's not common knowledge because if you have a base of what's the thing if if two people know about it it's impossible to keep it a secret no i think it's like it's like 20 no, something. it's much more than that, oh, is actually. It? Yeah. But yeah, but like, but, but there has to be more than 20 people. There has to be at least 100 people that are in history have been a part of all this stuff that know. So if it's all true or not, there's no way that this stuff could have been kept a secret. Like, there's no way. Well, unless these people are just being killed. Well, that's the thing is like, that's, that's the potential that could happen. I mean, like, I know it's stories, but like, that's basically how it works in SCP is like, you work there for life. And once you're not working there anymore, you're dead. All right, what's that? <sighs> SCP stands for uh, Secure, Contain, and Protect. Okay. And it is a fan-made fiction type thing. Oh, that's yeah. That's a bunch of anomalies. Yeah. And I got sucked into a rabbit hole one yeah. day with them. You You told me about this, but it's not... But it's not actually real. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. It, it, uh, some of them like really are like written really well to the point where it looks like they're, uh, like it's like, like they're like real government re- redacted like statements and stuff like that. Um, one of the fun ones was, um, I think we looked up, uh, 2112. The, and, oh, the song. Well, the number. 
that's why I looked it up because there's like 5,000 SCPs. Yeah. And number SCP-2112 is literally a Rush 2112 album that's cursed. Yeah, you told me about those, yeah. And anybody that hears it is like automatically compelled to start a Rush cover band <laughs> that has a cursed energy to it. And, but they'll seek out other people that have heard this cursed album. And then there's a cursed energy to it to, that anybody that sees the Rush cover band will they'll then be compelled to start a Rush cover band. It was bizarre. Not as bizarre as the milk that makes things milk. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was a glass of milk. And if you drink it, you then, you are then, un, like, you will then start lactating. And if you, like, you will literally just grow teats and more nipples and more, more, more teats to just continue milking. And if you aren't milked fast enough, like, you'll just swell up, grow, like, you'll, I think, the the story says like there was a rec- record of like a six teated man that was just like milking all over the place. Was this one of the well written ones? Yeah, that one was actually well. Oh, written. was it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that one was actually pretty well done. There was like there was like real like security clearance of like where it's at, how it should be kept and secured, and everything <laughs> like that. It was really bizarre. Yeah, I remember you telling me about this though, and I I kept thinking that these were things that people thought were real things and well, that's why i got yeah. sucked in and i'm it. just like i'm just like this there's no way this stuff is real and you're no. like it's well and then you're just like it's not real i'm like oh it's not real i thought i thought this was all real supposed yeah that's real. how i got sucked in i never believed that the things in there were real but <laughs> you know there's a lot of accounts of people claiming they've seen a lot of random shit yeah and that's what i thought i was reading okay is crazy people's testimony all right basically and that was pretty insane all right yeah cool yeah fun stuff but there's a you know what are some of the craziest uh theories and things that you guys have heard about audience tell us in the comments Oh, I thought you were asking, like, the crew. No. I mean, they can say things, too, if they really want to. You guys have a favorite theory? Uh, yeah. Whether you believe in it or not. I'm not saying you have to believe in it. Just want something that entertains you. Yeah, that um, there was no actual gunman, and uh, JFK's head just did that. Yeah, we, we went. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't need to go over that again. We don't need to go over that again. No? No, we don't need to go over that again. Oh, you really want to go over that again? I mean, it was in a whole episode. I don't think we I don't think we need to go over that again. I mean, <laughs> head explosion disease. Yeah, I don't. It's a, it's a it's a good it's a good theory. I think more people need to be but, well, aware well, of it. Well, well, I want to ask Nigel, is that a theory that you came up with or is that a theory that you heard? I'm I'm definitely almost positive I saw that floating around the internet somewhere okay. and I thought it was hilarious. So that's not from your mind. All right. I wish. <laughs> Um, I mean, what's the oh? What's the guy's name? L- Locust, Locust, whatever. What's his name? Locust Boner. No, the <laughs> guy. Locust Boner. The the guy <laughs> who commented who doesn't believe in birds. Oh, intrinsic, intrinsically, intrinsically last. last. Oh yeah, intrinsically last. Yeah, what the heck, intrinsically last? Like birds are uh, real. Like they are so real. I trust me. I've had I appreciate birds. You, that though. guy definitely was trolling. That yeah, guy I, was I, I something. Into that. <laughs> but people legit do not believe that. There are people that legit do not believe birds are real, and they think that they are all government drones. And like COVID was well, actually. I think that started as just pigeons. People yeah, believed that maybe. pigeons weren't real. But I like, don't know how it turned into all birds. Well, so I saw because I saw videos of people posting during COVID when they're driving around, and there's all these birds that were just on the ground, not moving, not doing anything. And then, so they're like, so COVID, the shutdown was to, for the government to gather the birds, to give them a system update, whatever. But that's also why birds can all go onto power lines because that's how they recharge themselves. So do they believe this is a world conspiracy? Yeah. They, they believe that just birds in general, just all birds are not China real. China really took that bullet for, for the world government. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's one thing. But no, birds are birds have a special place in my heart. So I, I believe I do real. like uh, he uh, same guy, same guy. I do like that he was on he was on my side with the Nelson Mandela thing. 
right? Like that he wasn't a real person and he was actually somebody named Jojo. Well, he wasn't. That's not an actual thing that you believed, though. That was well, just I a, believe it. That was a joke. You were don't. I even, don't even don't even. I really want. I would like Nelson Mandela to have to be in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Okay, That'd you, be dope. You'd like him to be, but that wasn't an actual belief that he. Oh, it's just he's not a real person. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that he was from JoJo. He said he was JoJo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Nelson Mandela. Jojo. I mean, I don't know how that could be spun around, where because I understand how all of the JoJos are called JoJo. Um, See, I don't know what this is, so it's you're an just, anime. Yeah, and it's and it's like ten series. There's like ten series in the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure story. Okay, and all of the main characters are named in a way where they're nicknamed JoJo. Mm. So fun. Yeah. What's um do you have a favorite theory though? Um I don't know if I have a favorite theory. I did see something on the internet the other day, which is like one of my favorite things I've seen in a long time on the internet. All right. And it said, um, all of the flat earthers are gonna be really sad when they figure out that the world is a vampire. That's <laughs> that's not a bad one. Yeah, that's, that's not hilarious. terrible. Yeah. Um I uh yeah, one of my favorites though, just because it's so ridiculous, is this guy. And I think he spouts off just these random Oh, are we gonna talk theories. about Alex Jones? I don't know, but he has a beard, older guy, glasses beard. I don't know who the guy no, the guy's name is. I don't okay. think that's Alex Jones. But the Rubik's Cube versus Rubuck's Cube. Have you heard of this one? No. So every year the the Rubik's cube is essentially like a time travel thing, right? Device because every year there's new records set where the Rubik's cube is being solved faster and faster. So eventually, they'll be solving it in negative time, and they'll be able to go back in time and collect all of the original Rubik's cubes when they were created, bring them back to this time, and sell them at an infinite profit margin because they've already been created. They don't have to make new ones anymore. However, if they do that and bring all of the Rubik's cubes back to our time, the instant like weight shift will end up breaking the Earth's crust and exploding the Earth. So someone has created the Rubik's cube, which is it's lighter, and can move better so therefore people can so the people with rubux cubes can get to go back in time first and kill the creator of the rubix cube and replace them with rubux cubes so they're lighter so therefore we won't break the earth's crust that is one of my favorite things because it's just it's it's so stupid but it's it's kind of well thought out and i really appreciate it <laughs> i don't know who that guy is but i'm not gonna lie to you i feel like i'd really like to hear that out of Alex Jones's voice. Okay. Because that would be hilarious. All right, I let's think, ask him. I, yeah. You were going to try to do it, I'm but you're just like, I can't. You're just like, I can't I do it. I probably could. I just didn't know the, <laughs> what what exactly to do it. We got the, we got the fucking the Rubik's Cubes over here. And we're, somebody's come out here trying to do a Rubik's Cube to save the world. Much lighter. Much fucking lighter plastic than the Rubik's Cube originally was. Won't destroy the world. So, do any of you three know who Alex Jones is? Oh, yeah. Did that sound like Alex Jones? Yeah, close enough. Oh, yeah. all right. Good job. Good impression. I'm so proud of you. Close enough for Rock. I can't. I'm a good impressionist. Are you? Yes. Bugs Bunny. Go. I have to hear his voice again. Okay. That one's not exactly. What's up, Doc? Yeah. Do Nigel. Hey, what's up, Doc? Do Nigel. What? That was almost like that was like a Bugs Bunny. <laughs> if J. Seth MacFarlane J. did Bugs Bunny. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I could. Yeah. So you just two impressions in one. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's even better. And then eventually, it's just going to be this is this is my impression of this person doing impression of this thing of this thing, and it's just it's a series of bad impressions where they just can talk normal. Yeah, it's a perfect job. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Anyway, all right. What else you got? What else you got for me? Um, we already talked about animals. So I feel like going back to that would be a bad story, but. 
you know mom's favorite animal sheep right yeah last time i was around me her and dad went to to lunch and we're driving back home and we pass this field mom oh look at all the sheep oh my gosh and me and dad are like looking around we're like we don't see sheep anywhere what are you talking about right there all those sheep and we're like you mean all of those pigs it was a field of pigs and mom's just like oh yeah those those are pigs <laughs> that's <laughs> So yeah, that was pretty good. You know, was I was hoping <clears throat> I was hoping I could stay young a little bit longer if mom and dad just kind of thought they were young for a little bit longer, but this senality is not helping out. <laughs> <laughs> is it? No, I guess not. Oh well, well. It was bound to happen. Yeah, at some point. I mean, they've lived longer than most people in our family, so Oh yeah. Yeah, that is true. Good for them. Yep. Yeah. Um, what else you got? I just set my phone down thinking I was just gonna. Oh, um, actually, I you were talking the other day how we were talking about just like movies and like sequels and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you've never seen this movie, but like you own it or something. Have you seen the new uh, Karate Kid? Uh, I have it on a UMD. What's a UMD? Uh, they were for, it's a Universal Media Oh, is that disc. for the PSP? It was for the PSP. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I have the new Karate Kid. Uh, but I've never seen it. I okay. don't, I don't even, like, that's, do I even remember? Who plays Jackie Chan's character in there? Wait. What do you mean, who plays Jackie, Jackie, Jackie Chan? Ch- I was thinking of Pat Marino. Yeah, Jackie Chan plays Jackie Chan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> idiot that was <laughs> that was really not my bad i'm sorry jackie chan yeah <laughs> um how many other celebrities can i try to apologize to i was 70 go that was I'm, i don't know if i know that many celebrities actually that's a lie i'm pretty i mean you could just list off band name members yeah and you could hit 70 really easily i think i could i think i would go with like bigger celebrities than band members people that have better name recognition oh yeah yeah so i don't know why we did that because segue to the other thing i don't remember what that was oh the princess yeah what 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 disney prince would you marry (laughs) not princess prince which one's the best? Aladdin's the best. Aladdin's not the best. Aladdin's the best prince. No, Aladdin's not the best. He's I mean, so Jasmine's cool. maybe. Jasmine's maybe the hottest princess. She's the best she's princess. The, yeah. She's not the. Yeah, Aladdin's not the best prince. How is he not the best prince? Because he's not even the coolest. There's like one clear this clear like there's one guy that's awesome. Who? Flynn Rider. What? No. Yeah, he is the best prince. I don't, but he wasn't a prince, though. Well, he becomes a prince. Like, what do you think he becomes when he marries Rapunzel? Yeah, but I think all the other ones are already princes. Aladdin's not a prince. He wishes himself he to be a, a prince. He's a street rat. He wishes himself to be a prince. Yeah, so but that all it's goes real. away. Reality. That all goes away once he fucking lets the cat out of the bag. It doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. The only thing that goes away about it is, is Jafar gains power and then, like, zaps his magic at him, whatever. Wait, wouldn't he also be considered the prince of thieves? Yeah, so he's also a prince there, oh, but he yeah, also he wasn't the prince. prince of thieves. Well, no, he would be the because his dad was the king of thieves, right? So yeah, so yeah, he is a prince is that, in his own that right. How that worked? I guess I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know that story that well. That's a good one. I mean, I guess I know the movie. But I like that's not the real story. Either. I like that one a lot because it has to do with Midas's touch, and I love gold. Does it the third one? Because they, they're trying to get that. the hand that is Midas's hand, and everything that it touches turns to gold. I don't remember that. I don't so it's like the, the ultimate one. treasure. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, That's the one where Robin, Willi- Robin Williams came back. Right? He, Robin Williams was in all of them. Mm-mm. Which one wasn't he in? I think, he, well, he was, 
I think he was he was definitely in the first one. Yeah. I don't think he was in the second one. I think, I think he so. Was. I think he returned for the third one. I'm pretty he sure he was in the second one. Yeah, absolutely. He's, I don't think he he so. is. I think he's the only person to play the genie until Will Smith. Okay. Well, first of all, that's a lie, because the genie also had other gigs outside of no. Okay, the thing, for, in the movies, we're not talking room. about Kingdom Hearts. Let's look this up. Someone IBM IBDM IBDM IMDb IMDb. <laughs> IMDb this will uh, uh Aladdin two, I don't think it's fucking Robin Williams. Is someone doing it or are we doing it? Okay, you're, you're behind a thing, thing that I can't see you. So are you good? Are you good? I act like I yeah, look at you, but Aladdin two, Return of Jafar. Let's see. Um... It's like this is this is a lot of effort. Uh, you might, uh, Russ. You might be your right. Yeah. No. Yes. You can't be. I am. What What, what does it say? Aladdin two, Return of Jafar. Let's see. So, you did first off. You'd think Robin Williams has showed up by now, but he's not there at all. Yeah. Who voices the genie? Um, it's not not, not Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Who voices the genie in Return of Jafar? Dan uh, Cas Castellaneta, is that you know a, what? I just read it. Castellaneta. I just read it. Still don't believe it. <laughs> Still don't believe. It. Yeah. I mean, Dan Dan Castellaneta. If, if that's if that's how you pronounce it. So. Okay. Homer Simpson. That's the guy who plays Homer Simpson. Oh, that's been dope. So Homer's the genie. Okay. So now you'll now you're on board. I'm okay with that. You're on, now you're on board. Yeah. It's not just some guy. It's Homer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. That's fine. All right, so I'm glad we got that. Clearly. I knew that this entire but time. Did he yeah. come, but did Robin Williams come back for the third one? Let's find that out. So I think he came back for the third one. Who voiced Genie in King of Thieves? Robin Williams. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. King of Thieves was the one I was thinking of. For some reason, in my mind, that was two and not three. So. Yeah. yeah fair. I mean, we're all. We're all in our 30s without children, so is, I, I imagine our uh, our uh, knowledge on Disney movies is a little rusty. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I mean the last time I've seen any of this stuff was more than a decade ago. I've seen the newest, the the live action Aladdin, which I actually thought was pretty darn good. Um, there was a live action Aladdin. Yeah, I thought it was pretty darn good. That's what Will Smith was the genie. Oh, that's right. We already went through that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. What's the new one they're doing? New one what? They're they're doing a new. What's the new live action Disney live action? What's the next one they're doing? No idea. You don't remember? Cars. They're doing Happy <laughs> Gilmore too. Are they? Yeah. I heard about it. I didn't think that was a real thing. It definitely looks like it's real to me. Okay. I don't know how I feel about it. And is it going to be like Adam Sandler is going to be Happy Gilmore? Yeah. Shooter McGavin's well, coming. And honestly, that actually, I believe it because Shooter McGavin it has been in um, commercials during like PGA events. Mm -hmm. So I believe it. I don't know why they would bring him back all of a sudden. If they weren't going to be doing it again, so it yeah I believe it since they're bringing him back can, for commercials. Can we have Adam Sandler fight Drew Carey? That would be fantastic. It would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yes, you guys can take that idea, take yeah. it, put it in the movie if it's not already shot. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. and or just another, or just even if it's not Drew Carey, just another game show like Pat Say Jack, something no, like it's that. It's got to be Drew Carey. I mean, it makes sense, but yeah. It's got to be Drew Carey. Dude, Drew Carey. Did you see Drew Carey like with the, his giant beard? He looked so cool. I don't think I've seen him with a beard. Yeah, he looked really cool. It took him a while to, get, to really come into his own on that show. He was really awkward for a while. Well, Drew Carey's always been kind of just an awkward. That was just kind of his style. No. Kind of just uh, that businessman type. Yeah. His Dilbert persona. Yeah. 
Um, I got nothing else on there. Well, I do have a question for you. Yeah. That I asked you before, but you just assumed it was going to be good, but now it's out. How's Unicorn Overlord? I haven't gotten around to playing the full game. <sighs> Jeez, Louise. actually, it's out. How how have you not? What are you, else are you doing? Um, well, Final Fantasy Seven, and then Star Trek. Star Trek, yeah, a video game? No. Oh, the like the new series that's out. Well, or... just Star Trek in general. Oh, There's okay. a lot, but yeah, we did watch um, Lower Decks. Which is phenomenal. But that's a Star Trek thing? Yeah. Oh, is it like just the, about the crew or whatever? Oh, yeah, it's a cartoon. That's oh, a cartoon, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be its adult cartoon version of Star Trek. Okay. Um, which was, it was, it was really good. They respectfully made fun of Star Trek. That's good. While expanding the lore and keeping everything in bound. It was, it was really, really good. It was such a fun watch. It was like... Mm. Almost as fun as watching the newest Across the Spider-Verse movie. Yeah. That was such a fun watch. Okay. You don't. I wasn't a fan. I liked the first one. I was not a big fan of the second one. Oh, okay. I that wasn't. Was so good. Yeah, I wasn't. It was so fun. It didn't do it for me. Fair enough. Yeah. But you love Spider-Man. I love Spider Man. Do, do you think they could make? Do you think they could make a Spider Man that you wouldn't enjoy? Oh, I'm sure. Do you like, or just no matter what, like you would just love it? Like, did have you liked all of the live actions? I'm not gonna lie all to three? you. Hmm. I am not a fan of Nick Cage. Why not? Because I don't particularly find. I mean, Nick Cage intentionally. I respect him. Right. I respect him, and I respect what he can do. Okay. But what he can do is intentionally, like, he he does things to intentionally be the way he is. Like, that's, like, he literally overacts. He makes sure everybody else is the star in his movies. Okay. Like... He he's an absurd guy. I mean, I enjoy his movies. And I think they're like, great. Yeah. You like things like fucking Fast and the Furious and Zombievers and and Tremors. Like Tremors is fantastic. I don't, don't, I don't ever I don't don't I, knock Tremors. Your taste in movies is not Tremors is great. Sophisticated. Um but but I okay, well I guess fine. Whatever. Why did you bring him into Spider Man? Because he's Spider Man Noir. Oh, is he? First of all, he was Spider-Man Noir in the Across the Spider-Verse movies. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. And second of all, as far as I know, I don't know if he's getting his own series or movie or if he's going to be in like Deadpool and Wolverine, but he is signed on to be Sp- Spider-Man Noir live action. Oh. As far as I know. Okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was him. Because it didn't seem like him. I mean... It- I guess now that you know that it's Nick Cage, go back and you'll be like, oh, yeah, that's obviously Nick Cage. Uh, maybe. But um, he's also Superman. Well, kind of. Yeah. Do you think they're going to... try it out for Superman, but... No, he actually showed up as Superman. When? in the I think in the Flash movie. Oh, in the Flash. Yeah. That's, I mean, fair enough. Mm-hmm. That was um, Tim Burton. Tim Burton produced or directed that? No. The, the in the original '90s when he tried out for Superman oh, originally that was buddy. that was supposed to be Tim Burton's Superman movie that was supposed to go along with his Batman movie. Okay, and that was actually supposed to be written by Kevin Smith. And Tim Burton's like, uh, I want a giant fucking spider, and uh, Kevin Smith said, no. So he said, okay, fine, fuck this. And then they never made the Spider-Man movie. And then Tim Burton went on to make Wild Wild West with a giant fucking spider. Oh, is that why? It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a funny story. That's really good. Yeah. Um. What? Which Batman was his? Was his Mister Freeze first one? Oh, he did the first. Yeah. The first one with like the first like big screen movie, not like mm-hmm. the show or anything. Mm-hmm. All, right. All right. Which 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 one was that one? I. Uh, who was the actor in that Batman, one? Batman. Michael Keaton. My, that was the Michael Keaton one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I, I watched The Flash. It was actually halfway decent. It was annoying, but it was halfway decent. Um, that was 
so bizarre that yeah. entire si- flash situation with Ezra Miller. Yeah, Ezra Urza. I Ezra couldn't tell you. Ezra Miller. Yeah, but because uh, he got in trouble and then they fired him and then there was like big, big, big like drama over him and then it kind of just vanished and then Warner Brothers came out saying that they canceled all the movies and then including the Flash and then the Flash came out. Wait, is that the guy who said that he's like the Antichrist whatever? Ezra Miller? I don't know if he said that. But he's like really weird and says like really crazy stuff. I think he I think if this is the guy I think he said that he was the Antichrist. Yeah. I don't know. I don't okay. know about that part. Are people looking it up? He kidnapped yeah, someone? Yeah, dude. I know he got in a lot of trouble. And then after he got in a lot of trouble, they were like, okay, we're going to help. You know, we're going to try to do what we can for him. And then he got himself in even more trouble. Right. So it looks like Ezra Miller considered himself to be the Messiah. Uh, oh. To be Jesus Christ. Okay. okay. Which... Which so he's the second coming then. So well, well that would make I mean, him the Antichrist. Antichrist. Would probably say stuff like that too. I'm gonna say yeah, that would make true. him the Antichrist. Right. That's probably why you heard that is because right. in your Christian communities, they're probably calling him the Antichrist because he's claiming to be the Messiah. Okay, just just so you know, I'm not really part of any Christian communities <laughs> <laughs> any longer. Like, I still believe, but I'm not really in any communities. So that's been a long time. We'll see about that. Okay. Um. Uh. But yeah. But oh, and speaking of DC stuff too. So I I didn't watch the whole thing, but I started watching because I mentioned in one of our th- episodes that I've never seen Black Adam. Mm-hmm. So I started watching Black Adam. Mm-hmm. You told me he was a bad guy. As of right now, he is not a bad guy. Yeah, uh, I think they try to sp- spin that around. Yeah. So I think the like the superhero government body whatever whatever the governing body of the superheroes are, they think it's bad that he's here and they want to stop him. So they hire people to like other superhero people to stop him. But he, so I think that's where it turns, but I haven't gotten, I'm pretty sure it's going to be, I think it's going to be flipped around by the end of the movie. Even I mean, possibly, but I just haven't gotten to that point. Like he is the hero of the city that of like Qatar or whatever it was called. Well, more shit's gonna happen. Yeah, like I think people are gonna die. Like his wife and kid are gonna be slaughtered, and like his wife and kid. Yeah. Whose wife and kid? Black Adams. He don't, why he doesn't have a wife and kid. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking of something. Somebody else. But yeah. yeah, he's like he's not going to be a good guy by the end of the movie. Okay. All right. He's just not good. Like Black Adam becomes a bad guy. Okay. Very bad. Guy. Again, I just I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but as of right now, he is the hero. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. I knew I knew that was happening in the okay. movie. It's always like, I mean, and DC likes to play with the morality of their characters. Like that's why they always like that's why like DC's biggest characters are pretty much their villains, because and, and like and the heroes are always. Like they're not none of, none of Marvel like none of DC's heroes are saints like none of them. Um, and that's that's just how DC likes to play play with their their things. Right. It's it's really weird. Like DC DC value I feel like DC their biggest value is in their villains while Marvel's biggest value is in their heroes. Yeah. Um. So. All right. DC has way more fleshed out villains. So, I a question for you: mm-hmm. Does DC, when we're talking about this stuff, does DC have way more fleshed out villains in the movies, or do they have way more fleshed out villains in the comic books compared to Marvel? Because I know Marvel has whole comic book series just following the villains. So, I mean. What exactly do you mean by that? Not, not, not like DC does. Okay, so DC also has like whole story yeah. arches just for the villains. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's what like you know, Joker has multiple that are highly, highly acclaimed. And the Joker does, but I think 
But I wasn't like, did they market the Joker to be such a huge success or was the Joker a huge success? So therefore they pivoted and started making all these side stories for the Joker. Um, It was definitely the TV series. Uh, what, what's the original Joker? Uh, Cesar Romero. Yeah, he, he made the Joker what it was. Okay. I mean, that, that is true. Um, I, st- I it wasn't until like the the eighties there, maybe the seventies. This is a cop topic you'll you guys can hear in old perspectives coming soon. But like there were, there is a time frame there where like you know Marvel or DC really took their shift, and it was like with um what's the fucking guy's name? What's it say? Alan Moore, Alan Moore, and uh, Frank Miller. Like they those guys are dark. Those guys are super, super dark. And they just decided to, like, take... And DC was always kind of on the darker side of things, so they just decided to, like, make their villains darker and just really push things over the edge there. I mean, like, Alan Moore hates superheroes. Okay. That's why he made the Watchmen. Okay. Makes sense. I don't really have any real input. So that's why this is a better conversation for old perspectives, but I am curious, so mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, DC just like DC just became more villain centric. They just had a better villain. Does DC have villain storylines where the villains end up winning overall? Um yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I I don't know, but I know that I know they do in Marvel. I know Marvel has storylines where the villain ends up winning. And, I mean, to I be mean, fair, in the mo- the most recent the Batman movie, the villain wins. Does he? I mean, that was Gotham is flooded. That was Gotham honestly, was success- successfully flooded. Such a boring movie. I didn't. I was not a fan. Okay. Uh, were you? I I feel like we're running close on ending this podcast so i don't want to start this conversation but it was probably the best batman movie see well one thing the that dark i is the best batman movie what, what was that? that the dark knight well one thing i appreciated about what was the best joker movie i don't know about batman movie. well one hey, the joker is pretty good right that's what i mean it was the best joker movie i don't know about batman i'm still not a fan of christian bale's batman but one of the things i kind of appreciate about the the batman was how like kind of incompetent he was because he was learning. Yeah. But also I don't really ever know like cuz I know that like what he Batman's like in the comic book his original like martial art is like Brazilian jiu-jitsu or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um because it's based on not really killing and all this kind of stuff, mm-hmm. whatever. Um but does he learn that before he's Batman, or does he become Batman? He sucks at being Batman, and then he needs to go and learn this stuff. Because no, he, like in he learns it like before he's Batman. Okay, because that's the only thing about the Batman is that he kind of sucks at being Batman. He's not very good at it. Yeah, I mean, I guess it all depends on the storyline. Like that's the prob that's yeah. the problem with all comics is there's such just so many storylines, and then the problem with the movies are is like they're taking. Not only are they taking multiple storylines that do exist in the same universe, but they're also taking storylines that exist in different universes and then jamming them together. Yeah. So now we have no idea what is and isn't canon anymore. Yeah. In a weird way. So Um, then the movies just become their own canon. Yeah. So like, you know, in in the Christian Bale's movie, Christian Bale was 40 fucking years old while he was like training with Ra's al Ghul. You know, I know they probably wanted some fucking time lapse there where he wasn't 40 but he was a 40 year old man he was a 40 year old man drop training with that dude you know with liam neeson you know but yeah. Uh, but yeah it's all it's all of a thing but like yeah there was there is supposed to be like a long period like batman did not exist in gotham like, like not Batman, but like I guess Bruce Wayne. Like, there's like a, a lot of the storylines. Bruce Wayne doesn't exist in Gotham for most of his like, like he didn't come back until he was an adult. Right. I don't know where he was for a lot of that, but 
you know, I think some storylines kind of make it sound like Alfred raises him and stuff like that. Some storylines make it sound like he's off gallivanting the fucking world. You know, that's where he gets all his Ra's al Ghul training was yeah. when he was a kid. Now, is the Ra's al Ghul stuff, it's always Ra's al Ghul who, like, does the training? I the... think at this point, yeah, it probably okay. it's probably been, like, 40, 50 years since, like, something like that hasn't okay. happened. Because, like... Isn't like also Alfred like an absolute BA and can just kick the crap out of anyone yes. too in like certain things? Does he kill Batman in one of them? I don't know if he kills Batman, but he beats the shit out of Superman. Oh, does he? But like, is he a superhero or? No. Okay. Well, there is times where he's suited up as Batman. Okay. Then there's like there's a storyline where uh, Bruce Wayne's dad doesn't die in the alley. Well, that's Bruce the, dies. That's the Flashpoint series. That's the Flashpoint. That's series? the Flashpoint okay. series where. Yeah, where, um, yeah, Bruce Wayne. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. I knew that the dad became Batman, but I didn't know that. Yeah, Thomas know. Thomas Wayne becomes Batman, a Batman that's like fucked up, and he does kill. Yeah, people. he kills. Yeah, he kills people. And yeah, yeah, the wife, the wife ends up becoming the Joker. That's crazy. Um, that's cool. That'd be interesting. I'd like to see that as like a film adaptation. Yeah, there's a lot of cool, uh, not like mainline. DC stuff that I think that they should do in the movies because DC has always had a darker reputation, so mm-hmm. I never understood why they go to the more hero centric things. Yeah. Like I really think, and more to what you were saying before, I really think uh, a cool one that they could turn into a movie is when Doomsday beats Superman. Okay, I think that's one of the most iconic ones where the good guy loses. Yeah, and it's just it's a really good comic. That's good. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. I mean, um, yeah. I know some stuff, just not, not like you guys. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just, I like comics. That's good. It's good to like something. Mm-hmm. I like comics and the stories that are told in the movies, uh, not so much. Not anymore. Yeah. I never really enjoyed I mean, some of the some of the Marvel movies, some of the DC movies are all right, and I enjoy them. But like for the most part, I just like I watch them, and I'm just like, like I don't, I don't get why you have to butcher things. Like I just don't get why you have to butcher things. Like if you want to make your own story, like just do it. Like that's what Sons of Anarchy is. That's Othello. That's just Kurt yeah. Sutter wanting to do Othello, just modern. And instead of just completely ripping off Othello, he just changed the character names and made them bikers. Yeah. Like, I don't see why people just, more people just don't do that. Instead, they got to take a property that exists and just destroy it. That's what, like, all these people come. Fifty Shades of Grey did it. Fifty Shades of Grey was originally a Twilight fan fiction. Was it? Yeah. I don't know if it was originally a a Twilight fan fiction, but it it is essentially Twilight. Well, it was. It was originally okay. writ- written like that, and but yeah, you know, you obviously can't write like uh, publish your own story if it's like taking properties from something else like that. So we had yeah. to change the names, right. and their Christian Gray came about. All right. Um. Yeah, I had something. Lost it. Oh yeah, I just. That's my advice to everybody out there. If you have something to create that already exists, just change the names oh, yeah, and that's, make it anyway. Well, that was the thing. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. It's like, I mean, I could care less one way or another because I'm not going to, I don't really care. But like all the new live action, like Disney movies, and like everyone's up in arms about them changing the races of like the princesses and all that kind of stuff. But like, I see a point to it. If you're going to like, if you want a black princess or whatever, just make a new movie. There's nothing wrong with making a new movie. Just make a new movie. Make a new story. Like no one, no one will have an issue if you have a if you have a black princess and it's their own story. I mean, but the thing is, is like, I think people do have problems with that. So I, I guess at that point, it doesn't fucking make a difference. Um. The internet will find a way to have a problem with something, no matter what. Well, yeah, that's true. 
You yeah. know, I bet what uh, the Frog Princess is that that one? Princess the, and the Frog. Yeah, Princess, princess and the Frog. Princess and Which is a really frog. good one. Yeah, I heard that yeah, was that, a very popular very one. Good. It's yeah. a really good one, but yeah. I, I, I still think like at the time, I bet the internet still had a major problem with it when, when it first. I came. really like the Norlands themed villain. He's so fun. Yeah. Wait, Flynn Rider. Mm-hmm. Back to that. What? What? He was. Which one was he? He was Rapunzel. Rapunzel, Tangled. yes, Tangled. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he was For such some, a gentleman. I was thinking the There's, guy from Frozen. That's yeah, who I was thinking. That's, of. that's the only. That's the only yeah. other guy that like. I think he's a, like a very, very, very close second. I did. I did if not first. Like it's between him, Kristoff, or is that the evil guy? Yeah, I don't know. It's really weird that we're having this conversation, but but yeah, but I saw Tangled. I actually thought Tangled was a funny movie. I oh, really yeah, Tangled, it. Tangled was great. Actually, I enjoyed Tangled it. was a good movie. Had yeah. some good music, some banger music in there. Yeah, so then he might be a prince. Then he might have actually been a prince, Flynn Rider. I I can't remember, but I thought you were talking about the guy from Frozen with Anna. That's who I thought you were talking about. No, Flynn Rider. I mean, Flynn Rider was not a prince until he married Rapunzel. But was he not? No. Okay. I have no idea. No. They're in uh, Frozen. And they are. They are oh. in Frozen. And so is, I think, so is the the Princess and the Frog people, too. Oh, are they? Yep. In the crowd. I didn't, I didn't see that one. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, we're at like 110, 115 right now? 112? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You got anything else, right? Right or quick? I don't have anything else. Cool. Let's wrap things up here. Cool. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe, hit, smash things. Right, that's what we're supposed to say. Yep. Smash the things. Yep. Um, Share, comment, make fun of us. Yeah. Correct thanks, us. Thanks for everybody that has been uh, watching. Thanks for everybody that has been commenting. Um intrinsically whatever <laughs> yeah. um you guys have a good one yeah thank bye. you by signing off that was so bad oh.